Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today's founder is Freeborn Garretson, the Methodist Paul Revere, though he should probably be better known for his anti-slavery activities, so we'll talk about it. Now, first of all, Freeborn Garrison, as a child, started hearing voices, and he told his friends and family about this, and the voices he heard, he believed were coming directly from God. Now, I'm not sure how long through his life these conversations lasted, but he did seem to want to take to the church very early in life. Unfortunately, uh, his family had many problems. He had his mother died, and shortly thereafter a sibling died, and had a lot of loss early in life, which seemed to slow down his desire to become part of the church. However, he ends up running into and being taught by Francis Asbury, who himself was one of the most important Methodist preachers of the time. And when I say of the time, I mean in the years leading up to the Revolutionary War. Now, I'm not going to get in too deep on Methodism, but at this point, Methodism was one of the fastest growing religions in the United States, and people were being converted quickly. Freeborn Garrison became one of these people, and in his early 20s, he, stundered, he studies under Asbury, and himself becomes an itinerant preacher. And to remind you, an itinerant preacher basically means a traveling preacher. He would move around, usually on foot or on horseback, uh, from town to town, giving sermons. He did this for several years and makes quite a name for himself. Now, Methodism in general at this point was known strongly for abolition, and Freeborn Garrison was no different. Perhaps it had something to do with his amazing first name, uh, that he was very much against slavery. Now, he did grow up on a plantation, and when his father passed away, Freeborn actually inherits a gigantic plantation and a good number of slaves. But, because of his morals and his spirituality, and again, probably that first name, he ends up liberating all the people under his bondage almost immediately. Furthermore, he ends up traveling around the mid-Atlantic, mostly Maryland and Delaware, on his travels, talking about anti-slavery, and even, even publishes a pamphlet against slavery. Now, he is able to help convince dozens of plantation owners and, and of large and small amounts of slaves under their uh, ownership, he convinces dozens of people to liberate their slaves from bondage. By the end of his life, he helps get hundreds of slaves liberated uh, based on the moral Christian arguments that he's presenting to his neighbors and the people living in this revolutionary country. Uh, now, Francis Freeborn Garrison actually does get put in prison for a little bit of time during the Revolutionary War, and I put a good amount of research into this, and it's it's a little bit hard to determine exactly why. It seems, what they said was, uh, it's because he was, he didn't join the revolutionary cause. He does seem to have favored independence, but many Methodists, as soon as the Revolutionary War broke out, fled back to England. Freeborn Garrison, being an American-born citizen, uh, didn't. He stayed around to continue preaching, and he never really signed any loyalty oaths or anything of that nature, so his, his loyalties were questioned. That being said, uh, he was also going around telling people to liberate their slaves in Delaware and Maryland and Virginia, which not everyone was on board with. So it seems that he was put in prison for a little bit of both. Now, he only spends a few months in there. He gets out and he starts preaching again, this time harder than ever. As I said, even though he's known as the Methodist Paul Revere, which he gets that nickname because he traveled so frequently and so far, all the time traveling, that this name... This name was not something he had in his time. Paul Revere wasn't that famous at the time. This is a name that's been given to him uh, uh, posthumously, it seems. Uh, but he still made uh, great strides, not only in expanding Methodism in the young United States and being a leader as the church grew, but, as I was saying, he was able to help uh, just so many people get liberated and, and really help push the idea of abolition uh, in its early days. Now... Other people were talking about manumission at this time. This is the peak of the Enlightenment, but he really becomes one of the leaders in that movement. Uh, he ends up, after the Revolutionary War ends, he moves to New York, where he marries Catherine Livingston, and he becomes a member of the Livingston family of New York. Uh, his brother-in-law is Robert... One of his brother-in-laws is Robert Livingston, who is the Chancellor of New York and makes the Louisiana Purchase and helps bring steamboats to New York. Uh, another one is uh, Morgan Lewis, who goes on to be governor of New York. Another one is Edward Livingston, who ends up writing the Livingston Code, really prog progressive law reform. We've talked about him recently 
Uh, so he marries into the Livingston family of New York. And from there, he doesn't travel. He doesn't seem to travel quite so much. He's quickly, not quickly, I should say slowly, he travels less and less and less through the remainder of his life. But his house in Rhinebeck, New York, becomes a really important stopping place for all the next generation of itinerant preachers. Because, again, they're on the move. they got to find places to stay in. His was always a welcoming house in New York, which was right in the middle of the eastern states. I know that at this point, as time goes on, there are more states joining the Union uh, a little bit further west, but the eastern states, the more populated states, he's right in the middle, so it's a really convenient stopping ground, and he always treats these people warmly in an effort to help uh, uh, spread the word of their faith. So that is a brief overview of the life of Freeborn Garrison, a really interesting figure in the American founding period. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely hit like. If you're new here, subscribe. I talk about the American Revolution all week long. And for those of you who are watching uh, and have been watching for a long time, you might have noticed something new. I am now putting out videos like this the same time I am releasing the articles about the same person. I used to write the articles about a person and put out the video a week later. I'm now doing it all on the same day. Don't worry, I'm still releasing my interviews and other long-form content at 8.15 at night, and we're also doing our Week in Review Thursdays at 8 Eastern Standard Time and Trivia on Friday. So nothing's really going to change. It's just these videos, instead of being clips, are now more higher-grade content. Usually, I don't promote myself so much at the end like I'm doing now, but I did it because I wanted you guys to know what is up with Founder of the Day. Thank you again for watching, and I will be back with another Founder for you tomorrow.